yes students let's talk about gravity inside earth so we've already understood that let's say this is earth in case a point p is lying outside earth there is a force of gravitation between this point let's say having mass m and between earth this can be understood in the way that let's say earth can be made up of infinite spheres of increasing radii so here the smallest sphere with radius r is equal to 0 lies at the center and the biggest one at the surface so each sphere could be thought of having its mass in the center attracting this point so the force exerted by each sphere on this point comes equivalent to the entire mass of earth consider that the entire mass of mass of earth is concentrated in the center that mass may be m and which is sizing force f on this point mass p so again we can say these are the force between two points right so that force could be written as g into m into m where m is the mass of the mass of the earth divided by in case we assume that this distance h is very insignificant as compared to the radius of the earth which is re so we can say this is divided by re square actually it should be re plus h square so this is h right so this is understood we already know this but we want to talk about what is the force the point experiences when the point is inside the earth so here we assume that the earth is to be a perfect sphere which is it is not so now the let's say this is the center of the earth and the point is somewhere here so this is sphere of radius r this radius is let's say r and here is our point of mass m right so now there are two things if you talk about the force of attraction between the force of attraction as a result of this much portion of earth this much portion of earth having radius r and point mass m yes that force exists but if you talk about the force exerted as a result of all the spheres which have the radius greater than r which have the radius greater than r these all spheres including the sphere which is at the radius radius of the earth they are not exercising any force on this point mass in other words you could say that if you have a hollow sphere they are not able to exercise or influence any force on gravitational force on any point mass inside them so now we are not really concerned about the mass of the earth above this point which i have deleted we are concerned about the mass of the earth concentrated below this point so we want to see what is the force of gravity on this point m which is you know inside the earth right so this point is p this point name is p so the force we know that f is equal to g 
a m m is the mass of this point point mass into m r what is m r m r is basically the mass of this much portion of earth right this is m r so when i take radius equal to r e the corresponding mass of earth is m e so g m m r divided by r square well here what is ishma the volume of this much part can you tell what is the volume of this much part volume of this much part having radius r well this is a sphere and uh, can you tell what is the volume of the sphere it is 4 by 3 pi r cube so since r is the radius it is r cube okay so volume of the sphere the sphere the smallest sphere having radius r is 4 by 3 pi r cube imagine rho is the density of the earth which is actually not the same throughout the uh, you know different places in the earth but we assume that the density is continuous it's uh, it's homogeneous the density is uniform everywhere so in that case what is the mass of the earth mass of the portion of the earth having radius r would be equal to yes student tell me what will be the mass so density is volume, volume to density correct so that will be 4 by 3 pi r cube into rho is it right is it right the student is it right 4 by 3 pi r cube into rho yes sir the mass yes. of this much portion of earth this is the mass of this much portion of earth all right guys so this is the mass then what will be the mass of earth relating to this formula so it will be 4 by 3 pi what which are now i will take r e r e you getting it you getting it very good r e q into rho is it right ishma this is the yes sir. mass of the earth all right so be very careful now force is equal to we can say force is equal to i'm talking about this formula g into tell me keep telling me g into m divided by r square into please put the value for mr mr this is mr this is mr tell me so what about the density i have a doubt Uh, what? Yes. What is it? You know so the density of, of no, no. The uh -huh. density of the smaller sphere will be less now. Why are we taking the same density in both? So density we have assumed all the density of the Earth is same. Density of complete Earth is same. We have assumed. We have just assumed the density everywhere. We are assuming is uh, you know uniform. Okay, density okay. is uniform everywhere. It's same density. Whether you're talking about okay. density of the shell, or whether you're talking about the density of this sphere having radius r, the density is same. That is rho, mass by volume, right? So, tell me what's the value for m r now? It is four by three. Four by three. Come on, pi r cube into rho. Is it right? We're just putting yes, this. Sir. We're just putting this value over here. All right. Let's be fast. So once we have done this, now be very careful about the next steps. There's a lot of confusion in the book, and there is a mistake also in NCERT book. So Ishma, from here, can I say what's the value for value for value for four by three pi into rho? What's the value of this? Please tell me. Four by three pi into rho from this equation. Four by three pi 
into rho. Can I say this is equal to MR four by three A pi point. into rho MR divided by tell me R cube by three pi into rho. Okay, I I request you to take from this equation from this equation four by three pi into rho is equal to I'm sorry, then it will not be MR, then it will be what? M e divided by tell me tell me past R R U cube. Oh, that's good. That's good. Is it right? Is it right? Yes, okay. sir. Four by three M e divided by R E cube. Okay, that's good. That's nice. So F is equal to now. Tell me now F is equal to force is equal to G into M. Divided by R square into please put the value for four by three pi rho. So what does this become? Please put the value for four by three pi rho. Is this value? So what does this become, Ishma? Four by three pi rho is equal to m e divided by R e cube. Is it right? Yes, sir. Into four by three pi rho into R cube. R cube. Oh, that's good. R cube. Is it right? No doubt in this. So this is yes, equal sir. to. I can say G into m into what? Tell me. M e g m m e. Into R R cube by R square is R and divided by R E cube. Is this right? Is this right? F is equal to G M M E into R divided by R E cube. See, you agree with this or not? I've explained every step. See here. G M by R square, R square, and R three, R three minus R is to part three minus two is R, right? So this is M E divided by R E cube. Is it right? Is this right? Yes, sir. This is right. Now see, you got a wonderful result from this. What? There can be a question in the board also. You know, on the surface, what is Force of gravity. If the point P is not here, rather it's on the surface. Number two, when the point is at the center, this equation beautifully tells you, in mathematical language, that the force is decreasing as you are, you know, coming towards the center. It's decreasing. Because R is decreasing, R is constant, G is constant, mass is constant, Ishma mass of Earth is also constant. Force is directly proportional to radius. Which radius? R. That means the distance of the point from the center. As this is increasing, this R. So force is also increasing, and as R is decreasing, means the point is coming from when r is decreasing means the point is coming from the top towards the center this is the meaning of r is decreasing am i right because we have taken r as distance of the point from center of the earth to the point in the earth maybe in a mine which is deep dug and which is at a distance of you know this distance this distance is r e minus r am i right students am i right ishma so now on the surface of the earth ishma on the surface of earth what is the value for r this r so i'll write this radius of again. earth that's good that's good you're right f is equal to say the equation once again g m m of earth into r divided by r e q is it right so on surface of earth on 
surface of earth. R is equal to, as you said just now, radius of earth. Right? This is R. And when you go towards the surface of the earth, this R becomes equal to radius of earth. So what's the value for F? So F is equal to G M M E and divided by R E square. So this is exactly what had been predicted by universal law of gravitation. Is it right? And imagine, if R is equal to zero, R is equal to zero means the point said, the, the point, point mass is at, yes, Ishma, center of, center of, earth. of earth. So see that, the F becomes equal to R is zero. So put the value of R here, F becomes equal to zero. We have mathematically, mathematically proven that force of gravity at the center is big zero. Ishma, if force, Ishma, if force is zero. If force is equal to zero, that means M into G is equal to zero. Mass can never be zero. Hence, it is proven that acceleration due to gravity at the center of the earth is zero. zero. That means there is no acceleration. The point when it comes from the, let's say, like you explained to you, Ishma, uh, yesterday, students, uh, let's say you dig a hole, you know, a very fine hole with its uh, internal balls are polished, well polished, imagine. The hole and there's this girl, you know, on the surface, you know, the moment this hole was created, now initially the hole was not there, she was on the surface, let's say within a second, you know, some magic, the hole is dug, this tunnel is dug, so this girl starts falling towards the center of the earth. Now, <coughs> when she was at the top, the force experienced by her was more. As she's coming closer and closer to the center of the earth, the force experienced is lesser and lesser and finally, the force becomes zero. Uh, the value of G, you can say, is decreasing. You know, is decreasing. Okay, now we always, we have been, we have been learning, Ishma, till 10, that the G is constant. You see that we go beyond that understanding. G is decreasing to the extent that at the center, yes, students, G becomes equal to? Zero. Zero. There's no acceleration. Because mass cannot be zero. Mass is still there. Girl is still there. She hasn't been reduced to ash. Okay. She has been fired. So, but then, so as she comes here, she doesn't stop here, interestingly. You know, it's like a raindrop, Ishma. It's like a raindrop when it's coming down, you know, it has its own weight, mg. There are two forces acting upwards. One is buoyancy force and the other force is, we call it viscous force or shear force. This air is touching the sides of the rolling uh, liquid drop. So this force of viscous force depends upon its viscosity. So as it's going down, initially mg is more and force of buoyancy and force of uh, viscous forces are less. So what happens? It accelerates downwards. And then what happens students at some time, mg becomes equal to buoyancy force plus viscous force. Now Ishma, at the time when on a rain droplet, when the weight of the rain droplets becomes exactly equals to upward forces, does the rain droplet stop here? Midway in the air? Does it stop because there's no force? No, it doesn't stop. It keeps going downwards till it touches the surface of the earth. Same, this girl, 
here there's no force but it she, but she keeps going the other way so she goes then again comes back goes again comes back goes and again comes back so that is a creation of a oscillatory motion or rather you can say a reciprocatory motion this is all about students how g is decreasing as you are going from the surface of the earth towards the center very interesting thing students that we're going to discuss see so interesting this is your earth we have learned as you are going towards the center your g is decreasing to the extent that at the center g becomes equal to zero another interesting thing as you go up as you go up g yes ishma now g will increase or decrease any guess increase oh another another thing you know interesting thing again see the beauty as we go up g again decreases g again decreases so we end up understanding that the value for the g is actually maximum at the surface of the earth surface of but in in the next lecture or in the evening lectures we're going to prove that now we have understood about the gravitational forces you know or the g as we are inside the earth when we go up the earth again value of g decreases and there we're going to use binomial expansions you know and we're going to calculate in the next video that by what factors let's say uh, mass on the surface of the earth has gone above by a distance of let's say d so by what factor the g decreases thank you very much students